All right, Joellen, so what do you think about our plantings? Wow, look at the dusty miller. Uh, they look good, don't they? That looks it's great. Big. Yes, but you know what? They, since they are biannuals, huh? they are trying to bloom. Okay. But we don't want them to bloom for right now, so we're going to cut them off. Ah, okay. And what color would those blooms be? They would be yellow. Yellow, okay. So they will be pretty. I um, mean, we may want to let them bloom at some point. All right. But for right now, we don't want them to bloom. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. And you know, we had that one yeah. here that had problem. And if you notice, it did come back. It's still coming back. So we're oh, going to. It did. It sure but did. we're going to get rid of this okay. dead part out here. So we'll let that keep growing. Look at that. And as you know, these will last all summer long, so we don't have to spend money, extra money, buying flowers for this area, wow. but we'll add to it with some, some interesting flowers. First, got to get rid of the pansies. I know, they look great, they don't they? They look good. They? But usually when things look great, it's the time of year, we have to change them out so something else will look great. This is always the hard part for me, though. Yeah. They look so good. It's hard for everybody. Oh, gosh. All right, so you want to get to it? Yes, let's All start right, let's pulling them it. up. Is that? that nice? Our, our amended soil is working. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what do you thought about the soil? Yeah, I don't think we need to amend it anymore. I think what we've done is fine. Of course, this is spring, and we're not going to be tilling up the garden yet. All right, Joel, okay. so I think that's it, right? Yes. Huh? Now, since it's spring and we're going to start with a new uh, planting, we're gonna put a little bit of slow release fertilizer down where we're going to plant. Okay. And again, we'll just sprinkle a little around the area we're going to plant. Not a whole lot. And the Dusty Miller will benefit from it too. Yes. Very good. Now we'll uh, get ready to plant our flowers. So what are we planting? Well, we've got some unusual plants this year. Good, we like that. We have what they call a bat plant or <laughs> bat-faced kufia. And if you see the, the face of the, the flower, looks like the face of a bat. Cool. So that's where it gets its name uh -huh. from. And the most interesting thing about this plant is that hummingbirds love ah getting the nectar from this plant. Even better. Yes, so uh, get some nice color and a benefit of feeding hummingbirds. Okay, with Another a cool pollinator. name as well, right? With a cool name. Cool name. So we'll set a few of these out. Nice root systems? Nice root systems on them. Good. Not overly root bound or anything, so we'll just be able to plant those right in the ground. Okay. There we go. Good. Well, since we've got such larger plants, we're going to go ahead and plant these. Okay. You want a trowel or you got your own? Oh, I got my own trusty trowel right here. All right. We'll go ahead and plant these. Okay. Now, do we need to plant them up a little bit or uh, what are your recommendations? The top level of the plant needs to be at the soil surface, so okay. just up to the plant. Just up to the plant. Mm hmm. And next, we're going to put in some Angelonia. And this one is uh, uh, called Blue, Big Blue. It should get taller, so we'll put a few of these just in the back. Okay. Again, root systems are oh, pretty good. good. You might want to just tickle these a little bit to put them in the ground. Okay. Next, we've got another somewhat unusual plant that likes the sun. It's a, a, a diamond frost euphorbia. Euphorbia. So, you know, a lot of weeds, you know, mm -hmm. around here are euphorbias. That's right. So we know that euphorbias in general do well in this area. Oh, they do just fine. We'll put a few of these out. And then we'll go ahead and plant these and then we'll fill in with red begonias right. last. So any insect or disease problems with these plant materials that we Have you ever heard of today? euphorbias in this area having insect problems? 
No. No. <laughs> no. That would be that, no. That's, that's fun. You know, you go with the wildflowers. If you go keep with plant varieties that are similar to, and related to wildflowers and, you know, you could call them weeds, Wait, but right. of the area, then you're pretty you're much going to be okay. good with your plants. All right, so we're, if you don't notice, we're kind of going with a red, white, and blue theme ah, okay. today. So, got a lot of white, got a lot of blue. We're going to put a little bit of bright red color in with our red begonias. So when you're laying out plants, I mean, how do you determine where those plants should go in your landscape? Well, I kind of like to think of what their mature size will be. Ah, okay. Not always 100% of the time, especially when you're dealing with annuals and perennials. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you know that some of these are gonna get bigger. Look at the Dusty Miller. Yeah. Dusty Miller has taken up a lot of room in our bed. So we don't need as many flowers as we were originally gonna put in this right. bed. Because they're, they're there. Okay. But when you're doing a landscape like we did on the, on the property earlier, um, yeah, you got to take into account the mature size of those plants because those are going to be more permanent than right. these will be. Makes sense. Not as many clocks as in years past, right? <laughs> That's right. That's because we mended it and now Mother Nature is taking care of everything and making the soil really nice rest the plant in. Okay, now do we need to mulch? Well, now we're, we're done with that. They're mulched, we left the mulch that was already on the bed on there, and we've got, we pulled away some of it, and now we'll put that back. Okay. Well, now we will let those grow in and see how they do in this bed this summer. Um, I noticed, you know, all landscapes evolve. Sure. And people want to change things, and and look, we've got this beautiful, <laughs> gorgeous. It's a, a coral bark, a Japanese maple, beautiful red yeah, trunk and good. branches in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Nice green chartreuse spring color, and they'll turn green. Um, very nice, but look how close this is to our bed. Pretty close. And yeah. maples are notorious for getting roots and growing very well. Mm -hmm. So we will see how well this tree does, because the better this tree does and the more roots we get into our bed, uh -huh. we may not be able to plant here in a few years because there'll be so many roots. That's right. But we'll just have to see. We'll just wait and see. And of course the canopy is going to grow as well, right? Yes, it'll so be it shady. shady. So we'll have to go from sun plants to maybe shade plants. Okay. So we'll just have to see how things go. Yeah, not, not a bad thing. No, not a bad thing. Just something different. All right, something different. Joanna, thank you much. Can't wait to see what this looks like throughout the season. I look forward to it. All right, thank you much. You're welcome. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.